My name is Eileen Buss. I am the turfgrass entomologist here at UF. Uh, I do a lot of work on uh, the biology and management of different insect pests that get into the different grass species. And so what we're gonna talk about today are mostly southern chinch bug uh, projects that I've got, uh, but we'll dabble a little bit in some of the bill bugs and a couple other projects as well. Just to let you know, uh, out here last year, uh, we're standing right now on the, the palmetto block. If you look at the block a little bit farther down, that's the Floritan block. Uh, we did a study out there last summer looking at the effect of different rates of nitrogen on southern chinch bug survival, development time, and fecundity, or the number of eggs that the females can lay. What we did was take plugs of the grass that were fertilized out here on the floor tam last year. We brought them into the lab and uh, we reared chinch bug nymphs on those different uh, treatments. And then when they became adults, we put them into uh, egg laying tests to see how many eggs they would lay per week. Uh, we didn't see any big differences between the different uh, nitrogen rates. Zero was our control, half pound, one pound, uh, two pounds and four pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. We didn't see any differences in the survival of the chinch bugs on those different rates of nitrogen, uh, but we did see a hint that you got a greater development or faster development to the adult stage on the two pound nitrogen rate. And it, we were using a combination blend product, so we could not discern the differences between uh, slow release and soluble fertilizer. What we did see very strong data for uh, was the uh, effect on the number of eggs that the females can lay. The females were laying more of their eggs faster, uh, say within the first uh, two to four weeks after becoming adults. They were laying more of their eggs during that time period. Uh, and then they were continuing to lay eggs at least 35 days after they became adults. And, uh, we had some surviving almost two months long. And so we did see significantly more egg laying occurring in the one and two pound nitrogen rates. We didn't see quite as much uh, in the four pound rate uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, but uh, one other factor that we noticed with the four pound nitrogen rates, I'm sure you guys all know this, but uh, there was a really strong correlation between gray leaf spot and that four pound nitrogen rate. So uh, be careful of overdoing it uh, for the disease side of things too. We typically run insecticide trials out here. Uh, a lot of times we'll run uh, chinch bug trials on the palmetto uh, block and some of you folks are, are standing on the uh, Seville block. Uh, that actually has a really nice grub infestation or it has uh, within the last couple of years. It's hard to really see a lot of damage on it right now. The adults are flying at the moment. Uh, I think the mass chafer adults are probably done right now. We are getting some adult flight of the May and June beetles, but those typically aren't turf pests. I'm seeing more May and June or Philophaga activity in the uh, tree nursery business. So if any of you guys are uh, ever buying live oak trees right now, uh, just make sure you check the root balls before you install them. Uh, Cause if you're increasing your irrigation on newly planted trees, uh, you could be encouraging more egg laying by some of these May-June beetle adults. So we, I do have a trial going out right now on a nursery that uh, is going to look at uh, preventive grub control there. I've got a, a sugar cane grub trial going on down in Punta Gorda uh, in cooperation with Valley Crest companies and uh, we're going to be looking at the two application times of uh, Arena, Acelaprin, and Merit uh, 75 WP and uh, see if we can get some preventive control of the sugarcane grub. That's one of the worst grub pests we've got in St. Augustine grass along the Gulf Coast. Let's see, uh, other trials we've got going on this year are southern chinch bug control with uh, resistant chinch bugs down in Orlando. Uh, we'll be doing that uh, in co cooperation with a PCO down there uh, and we've got a test that I wanted to talk about right now, a little bit more detail uh, that's going to go out on the palmetto. You can see we've got our, our plots already marked off, but we don't have treatments down yet. Those will go down after we make sure there's a really nice, beefy, healthy population of chinch bugs. So hopefully the uh, turf guys out there at Citra are not listening to this very well. <laughs> um, 
There are already some chich bugs there, but we always like having nice big populations so we can see treatment differences, uh, which of course most of the people out there don't like to hear about, but as an entomologist, if we don't have big numbers, we can't get good results. So we have three objectives for this particular test. Uh, let me give a little bit of background. One of the problems for PCOs out there who are running uh, lawn care companies, they've got to be concerned with how uh, their image is with the uh, size of the tank that they're using. You want to have an environmentally friendly image out there and uh, you want to look like you're not just spraying a lot of insecticide. At least that's the uh, impression I've got from uh, several folks that I work with. But there are people who also are uh, going out with backpack sprayers to try to kill insects that are living down in the thatch. And we're concerned from an efficacy standpoint and a, res and a resistance management standpoint that uh, folks are, are hurting themselves in the long run. What our goal is is to figure out what the effect of spray volume is on uh, chinch bug applications using Tallstar 1 and Arena 50WDG. And this project is, is funded through the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Our first objective is to determine uh, which is the optimal spray volume to use with one fluid ounce or the full rate of uh, Tallstar 1 per thousand square feet or the 12.8 ounces of Arena 50WDG per acre. The solution volumes that we're going to be using are a uh, half gallon, two, four, or eight gallons of solution per thousand with no post-treatment irrigation. And we're going to evaluate efficacy one week after application. Uh, the second objective is to determine which is the optimal spray volume to use with uh, the same rates of Tallstar and Arena 50 WDG. But we're going to use a reduced spray volume followed by a quarter inch of irrigation. So our spray volumes will be a half gallon, one, two, or four gallons of solution per thousand. And uh, like I said, we'll be following it up with a, a quarter inch irrigation 30 minutes after application. That's under ideal circumstances, but the reality of the world is that uh, if you're relying on post-treatment irrigation from the homeowner, it may be that evening, it, if you're under watering restrictions, it may be several days after the fact that they could uh, do their irrigation. Uh, and so the concern is how tightly are the products binding to the plant material or to the thatch and once they're applied, if it's a liquid app, then uh, are you even able to move that product down into the thatch uh, to get good efficacy. The third objective is to use the spray volume that gives the best, uh, best efficacy in objective two uh, with both of those products. And we're going to follow up with one fourth irrigation, inch irrigation, one, eight, 24, or 48 hours post treatment, and uh, then look at efficacy a week later again. So that's our big project on chinch bugs for this summer. Uh, we think it's very practical. Uh, DAX is funding it, this with some of the fine money from folks who uh, uh, aren't doing correct applications out there and get caught. So, um, one other thing I wanted to talk about are bill bugs. I, you know, folks seem very interested in zoysia grass right now, and believe it or not, bill bugs are already a problem on Bermuda grass. Those are the two uh, favorite hosts for hunting bill bug. And with hunting bill bugs, uh, we've got a pretty nice population of them out here in uh, at Citra. And just walking from my truck out to the uh, turf barn, I found oh maybe 15 or 20 adults just walking around on the soil surface. So uh, bill bugs are, as adults, they'll cause a notching damage to the stem of the plant. Uh, it's almost like they take a little ice cream scooper and uh, they feed on that tissue. The females may lay an egg inside that notch. That first instar, after it hatches, uh, is a stem borer. Once it outgrows the diameter of the stolen or the rhizome that it's feeding in, uh, it'll drop out and the larvae will become root feeders. The pupae don't cause damage, then you get adults again. Uh, in some of our greenhouse trials, we've seen a generation occurring on Bermuda grass and zoysia grass between eight and 10 weeks uh, and under optimal greenhouse conditions, uh, still pretty hot in the greenhouse. Uh, so temperature is usually pretty good there. 
and uh, an adult can live uh, potentially up to two months. We've seen easy survival with the adults for at least a month. So uh, anybody who thinks that they, if they wanted to replace their St. Augustine grass and go straight into a zoysia, uh, they're not going to necessarily be trading one, one grass problem if chinch bugs are your issue uh, for a nice uh, pristine grass that has no bug problems. It'll still be a challenge. But anyway, if you wanted to see what billbug adults look like, the larvae are legless. I don't have any larvae with me here today, but these are hunting billbug adults. And uh, some are alive in my hand, some are dead. They like to play dead. So uh, let them sit for a minute or two before they start uh, wandering off. But usually the uh, kind of control you do, you try to aim a contact insecticide to kill the adults and preventative insecticides are supposed to be effective on the larvae. Um, I've got a greenhouse trial that will be looking at both of those things this summer.